Okay, here we're going to look at why does Kramer's rule work. And Kramer's rule is a way to solve systems of linear equations. You run into it either in algebra or certainly in a linear algebra class. I'm going to do the case where we have two equations with two unknowns. Uh, the same process will work on larger systems. Obviously, it's going to get a little bit more messy to justify, but the idea is exactly the same. So suppose we've got, instead of a little a sub 1 and a sub 2, I'm going to say a1, a2, b1, b2, etc. So we've got a1x plus b1y equals c1. And then our other equation, we have a2x plus b2y equals c2. Again, the a, b's, and c's, those are all just constants. It says the solutions are going to be when x equals d sub x over d, y equals d sub y over d. And to compute those values, for d, we have to look at the determinant with entries a1, b1, a2, b2. And to get our value for d sub x, we look at a determinant with entries c1, b1, c2, b2. And then for d sub y, we look at a determinant with entries a1, c1, a2, c2. Recall to get the value of a determinant, we can just do our cross multiplication. So for example, to get d, we could take a1 times b2 minus a2 times b1. Okay, so I'm not going to write them out for the rest, but that's how we can compute a determinant with, uh, where we have a 2 by 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do to solve this is I'm just going to use elimination by addition. So we've got a1x plus b1y equals c1, a2x plus b2y equals c2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the x's first, and then we can just come back and do the same thing and eliminate the y's. So I, to eliminate the x's, we need the same coefficients but opposite signs. So I'm going to multiply my uh, first equation, both sides, by negative a2. And for our second equation, I'm going to multiply by positive a1. And again, that's going to give us the same coefficients, but opposite sign on the x's. Alrighty, so when we multiply, um, we'll have negative a sub 1, a2 times x. We've got to distribute, so we'll have a negative. I like to keep things alphabetized, so we'll have a2, b1 times y. On the right side, we'll have negative a2 and c1. So that's our first equation. For our second equation, we'll have, well, a1, a2, x, plus a1, b2, y, equals a1 times c2. So now if we do our elimination by addition, well, the x's will simply cancel out. We've got negative a1, a2, x, plus an a1, a2, x. We've also got, uh, I'm going to write our, our, our second part first. We would have a1, b2, y, minus a2, b1, y. And on the right side, again, I'm going to write the second term. We've got a1, c2, minus a2, c1. So all we've done is just a little bit of uh, elimination by addition. Again, all the a's, the b's, and c's are constants. So to solve this equation, I'm just going to factor out the y on the left side. We would be left with a1, b2, minus a2, b1. Nothing's happening on the right side. But now to get our uh, value for y, we can simply divide. So we've got a1, c2, minus a2, c1. We would just divide both sides by a1, b2, minus a2, b1. And it says we now have our solution for y. So we'll, we'll come back and compare that to the formula in just a second. And now I'm just going to do the exact same process, but we'll eliminate, instead of the x's, we'll eliminate the y's. Okay, so let's see. Again, we started off with a1x plus b1y equals c1. 
a2x plus b2y equals c2. Now we're going to do just the exact same thing, well, almost the exact same thing. I want the coefficients on my terms involving y to be the sign, but opposite. Uh, I want them to be, excuse me, I want them to have the same coefficients, but opposite sign. So I'm going to multiply both sides of my first equation by negative b2. And for the second, we'll just multiply by b1. So again, we've got to distribute. I'm going to keep things alphabetized. We would have a1, b2, that'll be negative. So we've got negative a1, b2 times x. If we distribute, we'll have negative b1, b2 times y. On the right side, we would have negative b2 times c1. And then for our second equation, we would have a2 times b1 times x plus b1, b2 times y. And then on the right, we'll have b1 times c2. So again, our elimination by addition. Um, again, I'm going to write the second term first. We would have a2, b1, x minus a1, b2x. The terms involving y are going to cancel. Again, we've got the same coefficients but opposite signs. And on the right side, we've got b1c2 minus b2 times c1. We can do the same thing. We can factor out our x. So we would have a2b1 minus a1b2. On the right, we've got b1c2 minus b2c1. And last but not least, we divide. So nothing crazy here. We're just doing elimination by addition. We just have all these generic, you know, these generic values. And let's see. So we would divide. We would have a2, b1, minus a1 times b2. All righty. So those are going to be our solutions. Let's go back and compare now, for example, for x. So I'm going to write down, it says x will equal, for example, it says that's going to be d sub x over d. Well, d sub x, we said that is the determinant using c1, b1, c2, b2. d is going to have uh, the determinant using the entries a1, b1, a2, b2. And if we use our formula that we were talking about uh, just a second ago, if we do our cross multiplication, we would have c1 times b2 minus c2 times b1. In the denominator, we would have a1 times b2 minus a2 times b1. And if we clean this up just a little bit, so this is what, this is what I got when we went through the process. Notice we can get that. Um, I didn't alphabetize here. We'll do that, though. Notice the only thing that's different are the signs are, are flip-flopped. We could multiply the numerator here by negative 1, the denominator also by negative 1. And if we were to do that, if we were to do that, let's see. Um, again, I'm going to write the, uh, the positive term first. So if we distribute, we would have a positive b1c2. And then if we distribute, we would have a negative b2c1. And in the denominator, if we distribute, we would end up with a positive a2b1 and a negative a1b2. And let's see, that was the value for x. Again, using our, our formulas involving determinants. And lo and behold, after we did all the elimination by addition, notice that's the exact same thing that we had, just like it should be. So I'm not going to do the same thing for y. You can certainly justify it exactly the same way. Again, you can expand it out. But that's showing you how you would get the formula for x. And again, you can do the exact same thing, computing your d sub y over d using your determinants. And again, you'll get the... Uh, the other formula that we wanted. So nothing too bad. Again, it kind of sometimes seems like magic. But again, all, all, uh, all that happens is you're just doing a little bit of elimination by addition. 
and that's really all there is to it. Just kind of keeping everything's, uh, just keeping everything straight with all your subscripts that are floating around.